Well, I am in Paris at the moment and in this unimpressive street with the beautiful name Rue des Roses, there's a small bulwark of analog film. Similar to the Gaelic village in the Asterix and Obelix comic novels, which bravely defends itself against the superiority of the Romans, the flag of the film strip is raised here. I now have the very rare opportunity to go to a store that actually sells analog film and makes a living from it. And, if we are lucky, Fred the owner will also be there. So, I'm very excited about this. Hello Fred. It's a pleasure to be here and visit your great store. Oh, fantastic. Tu es le bienvenu, évidemment. Also, a lot of 16mm films and... Look here, an old display. Can one say you have a passion for analog film? I think you can say that, indeed, displays proves it. A real passion for analog film material and for films that are no longer to be found on modern media. So, the analog is interesting for me on two different levels. On the one hand side, it is the material, the carrier, which also refers to the origins of cinema, and on the other side, the content, which is very often only available on this material. This is what I am interested in film rarities as well as the quality of a copy. Donc la pellicule m'intéresse également pour ça. La rareté des films et la qualité de du support. And where would you say does this passion comes from? There are several things that come together. Through my mother who took me to an old cinema. I developed a love for the cinema, for cinema culture, and at a very young age. I was born and raised in a time when analog film was king. There was no other medium. I saw the videotape coming up. I was a young adult then. But for me, the analog footage remained the only format I wanted to watch film on. I didn't ask myself the question whether I liked the analog footage or not anymore. I love films and to watch them, analog film material was the thing. Then the analog film gradually disappeared, but I stuck with this nostalgic film image, which is a bit soft and a bit unusual compared to video and digital images that followed. First, there was the love for cinema, then the love for this nostalgic and also outdated material came up. Do you have a private collection? And if so, in what are you interested in, especially? I have a large private film collection and my collection is still growing. It's been growing for years. I'm not averse to muda media. I have a beamer at home, I have DVDs, I watch DVDs. I can't escape it either. But in my collection, I have kept the films that you cannot find otherwise. That means I like filmed chansons very much, the scopitones and filmed chansons. They were produced in France even before the music videos. They were very popular in the cinema. So I collect these short films. I collect commercials and movie adverts. 
also a short film. When you used to go to the cinema to see a film, you stayed in the theater for three hours. Because there was the film, which lasted an hour and a half, there were the news, there was a documentary, and there were the commercials. And all that was part of the screening. When video and then digital cinema came, this part of the program disappeared completely. There are no more short films in the cinema, there are no documentaries before the main film starts. All this is completely gone. And it does not exist on modern media. That is why I have concentrated my collection on these preliminary programs. It's called a preliminary program, and I have several thousands of them. My collection sur ces avant programmes. On appelle ça un avant programme, et j'en ai plusieurs milliers. Since when does your store exist? The business has existed for 20 years. This year, it's 20 years. I used to be a film technician and set designer, and I live here in the neighborhood. At that time, I had finished work on a film on which I have worked abroad for a year, and then I came back. This place was empty. The shop is located between my house and the cafe where I go every morning and drink my coffee. And I saw the empty store with a for sale sign. I had just made this film, accordingly I had money, and immediately called that I wanted to buy the store. It was not really intended as a store initially. It was intended as a place to host my collection and a garage for working on my film projectors. And I liked it and did that all day long, much more than my work, so that I gradually stopped working to devote myself to this place. That's how it became a real business. Progressivement, j'ai arrêté de travailler pour me consacrer uniquement à ceci et c'est devenu un vrai magasin. How many films have you stored? There are 6,000 movies here, roughly, and in my warehouse I think I have about five or 6,000 Super 8 films and at least twice as many films in 16 mm I've got two or three times the volume of the room as here, but it's completely cluttered. I can't even go inside. I still have a double garage, which is not filled with cars, but with film material. Next door, I have a shop which is not open. It also serves as a warehouse. <laughs> and I have film copies in the back of my own parking lot behind my cars. I have them in my house. I have them everywhere, actually. Everywhere I can find room. I have them in my parking lot. I have them everywhere. 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 And where do the copies you offer here come from? There are several sources, and since I'm the only one here now who is interested in Super 8 and 16mm, I am quite well known. When junk dealers or biffin, the people who take the trash away, find films, they bring them to me. When a collector dies, I'm usually contacted by the family. And when a film store is closed, it happens, the films usually end up here, through one or more middlemen. Every time movies are out for sale, I try to be among the first and take everything with me, without distinction. I buy everything first and then I sort it out. J'essaye d'être d'être là dessus, le premier, et je prends tout. Sans aucune, sans distinction. J'achète tout et je trie après.